Angela here from Blue Eye Style. I'm going to be talking today about this awesome paint sprayer that my friends over at HomeRite sent to me. They sent it to me a few months ago and I've been dying to find the right project to try it on and I'm currently working on the one room challenge and I'm redoing our laundry room and have a couple of cabinet doors that I'm wanting to paint green so I think it's the perfect chance for me to finally try this out. I'll admit I've been a little bit nervous to try it, I've never used anything like this before but I've heard from a lot of people that it's really easy to use and that once you've tried it you really never want to paint anything any other way. So I'm excited to give it a try. Hopefully I'll be able to do a good job. I thought it might be easier to take a video even though I've never done one of these videos before so bear with us. Uh, I thought it might be easier to do this than just a photo tutorial to really show you how this works. So first off I just wanted to show you when I took the spray out of the box it looked just like this. I didn't have to assemble it. It came out of the box ready to go. It also came with instructions. There's a quick start guide and then just maybe two or three more pages of written instructions. So there's really not too much to it. I would definitely recommend reading everything before you get started. And it also comes with this little cup and we're going to use this to test the viscosity of our paint and make sure the paint's not too thick. If it's too thick it won't come through the sprayer right so we're probably going to have to thin our paint down just a little bit before we get started and I'll show you that when we get to that step. So as eager as I am to start getting some green paint on our cabinet doors, uh, the instructions recommend that you should really test this out just with some water on a piece of cardboard first so that you can get a feel for how it sprays. So we're going to try that out and then we'll get started with our paint. Okay guys, we're ready to test this out. Like I said, the instructions recommend that you test just spraying some water onto a piece of cardboard initially to get a sense of how it works. So that's what we're going to try first. So I filled the reservoir up about halfway with water just from the kitchen sink and I've got it plugged in. The great thing about this is that you don't need a separate air compressor. You just plug it in and you're ready to go. So it's nice and compact and easy to maneuver. The other thing I should point out before we start with our test is that this nozzle can be turned in three different directions for different spray patterns. When it's turned in this position, it's going to give you a horizontal spray pattern. When it's turned at an angle like this, it's going to give you a cone-shaped spray pattern, which is probably most similar to what you're used to with a regular can of spray paint. And then when it's turned into this position, that's what you're going to use if you want to do a vertical spray pattern. I think that for our cabinet doors, we're probably going to want to spray horizontally, but we're going to test this out and see how it goes and make a decision. Okay guys, I'm about to pull the trigger and test this out for the first time, but I think it's going to be pretty loud once I do that. So a couple more things I want to tell you before we get started. Um, it recommends that you always keep the sprayer in an upright position like this. You don't want to tilt it too much. And you also want to be spraying at a 90 degree angle, which is why we've leaned this cardboard upright so that we can spray as close to 90 degrees as possible. So I'm going to get started here. It's going to get loud, so let's just watch and see how it works. Okay, so once you pull the trigger, it takes just a couple of seconds before anything starts to come out. You probably saw that I had a lot of drips. I don't expect that that's going to happen at all once I'm actually working with paint. This water is obviously so thin, uh, the paint's going to be a lot thicker than that. It says that I should be um, holding this about 4 to 10 inches away, but if I'm getting uh, too much drippage or too thick, then I'll have to adjust how far away I'm standing. So I think maybe we'll put some paint in here and test out some paint on the cardboard as well to get a better feel for that before we actually start on our cabinets because once we start on the cabinets, there's no going back. Okay, so we've been thinning our paint down here for a little while. We're trying to find the ideal viscosity. And the way that we test that is by measuring how long it takes for the paint to run out of this little cup. And this cup came with my home right sprayer. So the first time I did it, before we thinned the paint at all, when we just filled the cup up with some Sherwin-Williams uh, latex paint straight out of the can, it wouldn't really run through the cup at all. I mean, if I'd stood here long enough, I imagine that in maybe five or six minutes the cup might have emptied, but I sort of held the cup for 10, 15 seconds and nothing poured out of it. So we obviously knew we needed to thin it. We've been thinning it an eighth of a cup of water at a time, and we're now at five eighths a uh, cup of water in here. The last time we did this, it ran through really nice and smooth, but we just still weren't running fast enough 
like I said, we're trying to get to a runtime of 25 to 40 seconds. So I'm holding my finger on the bottom here each time I fill it so that nothing pours out until I have it completely full. And now what I'm gonna do is start the timer on my iPhone. Okay, so I've got my stopwatch up. I am going to press start. Actually, I'm gonna have my husband press start so that I can do this all at the same time. And when he pushes start, I'm gonna pull my finger off of here and we'll see how long the run time is. Okay, one, two, three, go. Okay, so you can see it's pouring through really nice and smooth now. Like I said, each time we've done this, it's gotten a little better. The first time uh, that we thinned it just a little bit with only an eighth of a cup of paint, it started to run through, but it was coming out in big sort of clumpy drops. And each time it's gotten better and better. So right now we're at about 20 seconds and the cup's about halfway empty. So I think we'll see how this goes, but I'm guessing we're gonna be at right around a 40 second run time, which is sort of the maximum time we want. So if that's the case, we're gonna to have to decide whether to go for it or thin it just a little bit more. Although we're coming up here on 40 seconds and the cup is still not quite empty. It seems like it empties faster at the beginning and then slows down a little bit. So we're gonna to need to thin it a little bit more and we'll try this one more time. Once we get to the exact uh, proportions, I'll let you know what we ended up with. Again, it'll vary from paint to paint, but we're using a Sherwin-Williams uh, satin finish acrylic paint and needing to thin it a little bit more. Okay, so I've been out here testing this with actual paint this time instead of just water, but still just spraying onto some cardboard that we had laying around because I wanna make sure I know what I'm doing before I paint on my cabinets. You can probably see the way the light's hitting these. I've got a little bit of a stripey effect happening in here, and I think that's because I wasn't overlapping it quite enough, so it's good I tested it. Um, I read in the instructions, and it says that if you're getting that stripey effect, it means that you're either tilting this too much, which I think I was holding it pretty straight up and down, or that you're not overlapping your strokes enough. So that's what I need to practice just a little bit more is making sure I'm overlapping my strokes enough. I should be holding this about four to 10 inches away from what I'm painting, keeping it totally upright and overlapping the strokes by about a third each time. One other thing I forgot to mention that's important and I'll have to be really careful of as I'm painting on my cabinets is that you don't want to rotate your wrist as you're spraying like this. If you do that, you're going to get uh, thicker paint in some areas and thinner in others. So what you want to do is keep your wrist steady and move back and forth in nice smooth strokes like that. So these are all the things I'll be keeping in mind as I actually start painting our cabinets. Wish me luck. Okay guys, I've got my first cabinet door out here and I'm actually ready to get started. These cabinet doors actually have glass in the middle of them and so what we did was cover the glass with a couple pieces of cardboard that we had out in the garage and some painters tape around the edges to get the glass totally covered. We did that on on both sides of it here um, and I'm going to start painting on the first cabinet on the back side of it so you can see there's the holes here for the hinges. I just am still wanting to test out and make sure I've got my uh, technique just right so I'm going to start on the inside of the cabinet door and once I'm really happy with how that's going then uh, we'll let them dry and we'll flip it around and do the front side of the cabinets. Okay guys, I painted the back side of my cabinet and as you could probably see in the video, I was moving in horizontal strokes. So I had my nozzle in this position for horizontal strokes. To do the sides here, I think it's gonna be easier if I do a long vertical stroke. So I'm turning this so the nozzle is now this way and I'm gonna go up and down on this side. Okay guys, we're quickly running out of daylight, but I just wanted to tell you where we ended up with our uh, painting project today. So we now have the back side of both of our cabinets painted green. They're dry to the touch, but they're not quite dry enough for us to flip them around yet and do the other side. So since we're running out of daylight, we're gonna move them into the garage for the evening to let them dry. And then either later tonight with our garage work lights or tomorrow in the daylight, 
we'll flip them around and we'll do the other side. One other thing I wanted to tell you, now that we've done one side of each door and feel like we really did get the viscosity right, the paint was flowing out of the paint sprayer just perfectly, I wanted to let you know where we ended up on our mix of paint and water. We ended up at basically a 50-50 mix. So we started with one cup of paint and we ended up mixing in a total of one cup of water to get it thin enough to come through the sprayer. One of the things I was super concerned about was how much that was gonna change the color of the paint. In my mind, I was fearful that adding 50% water was really gonna lighten our paint color. So now that we've got them painted and they're pretty dry, we brought out our paint swatch to take a look and see, and it's basically a perfect match. So it turns out that my fears were unfounded. Even after adding 50% water to thin the paint down, the color is exactly what we wanted it to be. So I'm very happy to report that. Once we finished painting the front of the cabinet doors, we were able to install them in the laundry closet, and you can see just how great they look. Now that I know how easy it is to use my Home Right Finish Max sprayer, I'll definitely be using it on many more projects. And if you'd like to see the rest of the laundry room, head on over to the blog. I've got details on the temporary wallpaper installation, how we created the DIY countertop, and tons of small laundry space organizing tips. Visit Blue Eye Style for more decorating, organizing, and DIY inspiration. You can find me at blueeyestyleblog.com and also on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and Twitter.